Now, for the YouTube channel, because all this always gets edited for YouTube, we're going to start talking chess right now. And today we're going to talk about one of the most important topics that I've come to appreciate more and more in chess, and that is blunders, mistakes. You might say, well, why are we talking about mistakes? Well, on this channel, everybody already knows I've talked about the topic. It's best to learn from other people's mistakes. Of course, the way we normally learn is from our own uh, dumb ideas. Ooh, what did I just do? Oh, my goodness, the pain. I was talking today with a friend of mine about a mistake I made once. Could I show it to you? This was my boy, Clotaire Colas, back in Brooklyn Tech High School when I first started playing chess. And he did this to me in a position. I'm going to show it to you right now. Let me clear the board. And I'm going to set up a position for you. I don't know why I'm bringing up this nasty memory, but the position was something like this. Uh, I'm going to only show you a fragment, okay? I'm going to show you a fragment of the position, and then you're going to see what I'm talking about. So this is the fragment I'm showing you. So forget about what else was on the board. I can assure you other things were on the board, okay? <laughs> there were other things on the board. At any rate, I had just played the move B6. Let's... Let's actually back it up a little bit. Uh, let me put this pawn here. And uh, it was something like, it was, it was like this. And maybe the pawn was back here at the time. So it was a position like this. I played the move B6. And there was things blocking my, my knight from going to any one of these squares. There might have been a queen on this square. So you might, let's imagine it's something like this. I'm going to make up a position because I know those of you out there are like, well, why don't you just play this move, Maurice? Why don't you just do that? Okay, so just imagine, oh, weren't there any kings on the board, Maurice? Hey, didn't white have a lot more stuff? Oh, how did two kings? All right, here we go. It was a position like this one. And I played this move to attack his, his pawn. And he played B5. Okay, that was tricky. He played B5. Imagine there's other stuff on the board. We are going back like, we're going back 40 years. <laughs> 40 years. Yeah, that's right. And you're like, damn, Maurice, how old are you? Yeah, this was high school. So we're going way back to the early beginnings, okay? So B5 he played. I played knight back, and he played C6. Now, I guarantee you there were other things on the board. This was not the position. The rest of it. But this was the basic basics of the position that I want you to remember. And in this position, my knight is trapped. It can't get out without taking this pawn or going to a mind square. And with my knight trapped, my rook was trapped. So I think something like this happened. But it didn't really need to, because as long as this pawn is protected, this rook is not going anywhere. Now, this is how miserable my position was, okay? This knight is not, now not in the game. This rook is therefore not in the game, unless I give up a whole piece. And I remember when this position happened on the board, and I stared at it, and he was laughing. This is Brooklyn. This is high school. He was yucking it up, looking at my two pieces Back then, and I was like, what the hell? My knight can't get out. I'm stuck. I ain't never seen this before. Let me tell you, all I needed to do was see it once. This was a horrible, blunt, horrible blunder even allowing this. But all I needed to do was see it once for the trauma of it to be seared into my memory for all time. All right? I'll never forget this happening to me in an actual game. Like, what? No, I've never seen it before. So when it happened, I was like, what's this? You know, and then what didn't show up in any books? I was studying and look at my knight. <laughs> what the hell? Look at my rook. And he schooled me after that. Boy, Clotaire used to kick my butt every which way from center. Let me tell you right now. Okay? Like, what? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Just absolutely disgusting to be caught in a position like this. So. Oh, I wish I could have teleported my knight like that in a position. But no, that's not what we're talking about now. So this is the kind of thing I'm saying. Mistakes. Now, I have to say, I learned from my own mistake. But smarter so that you're not traumatized, you know, because I was like, <laughs> he's like, <laughs> I'm going to kill him. Anyway, <laughs> I was traumatized. It's better to learn from other people's mistakes, right? And don't just... No, make sure it does have a little bit of a traumatizing effect. You got to empathize with them. You got to be like, oh, yo, that hurts. That really hurt bad. Oh, man, you got hit like that. Wow, that hurt. 
Let me remember that because I don't want that happening to me. You know what I'm saying? That's how you want to learn from chess mistakes. Don't see a mistake and be like, <laughs> I would never do that. Of course you would. We know you would. Don't, don't be ridiculous. Of course you would, okay? Make sure you see somebody else's mistake. You go, hmm, let me catalog that in the brain because I don't want that happening to me. And I want to use that against uh, my good friends, my best friends, in fact, so I can be like, huh, boom, gotcha. So remember that it's extremely important to learn from other make people's mistakes and make it a point to learn. Freeze it in your brain. Just got it. Don't, don't let casual mistakes, or I should say, don't let mistakes casually pass you by. It's one of the greatest teaching instruments in the human race. But it's better if you're learning from other people's mistakes so that you didn't have to tr stumble and fall and bleed on the ground to say, oh, you know what? I should have looked out for the damn banana peel. Like, oh, I shouldn't have touched the fire. Wow. Um, I should have, you know, I should have seen when Joey touched the fire that he didn't have any skin left. I should have known. Yeah, exactly. Learn from other people's mistakes. So let's get to some mistakes. But these mistakes are going to be whew, 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 spectacular. But we're going to start with an easy one. Relatively easy one. Okay, whoa, somebody's repping the merch. That's what's up. That's what's up. Thank you so much. Guru Ocus. Love it. You got Boom and Gangsta Chess merch. I appreciate it. I appreciate it indeed. All right, Niners Rule say, I know what you mean. I got my queen trapped in a tournament game and it's seared in my brain not to let that happen again. Exactly. What, Michiko, you're wearing your B shirt right now? That's what's up. That's what's up. Big dog, that's what's up. Appreciate it. You can get the merch at X Clan Merch, but let's get to the mistakes. So in this position, it was black to move. Black had played this move D4 and forced his knight to go back earlier, just to move earlier, in fact. And so now black played the move E5. Now, you see a position like this, and you know, you're thinking, no problem. E5 is on the board, but there's a little bit of danger slight amount of danger there's a little a diagonal issue this knight might move might hit me here might go here crap grab there looks like you might drop material so in this position white had to be somewhat cautious or i will say extra cautious because you never know what might happen white decided in this position to get deep when your queen is on doing a balancing act you need to be accurate you need to be accurate, okay? Let's be clear. Thank you very much, Hellstorm, and much appreciated, much appreciated for the compliment. You need to be, you need to be really circumspect right about now. There's some tactics. So what should he do? Well, the right thing to do without any question about it is to make sure you shift your queen out of there. Queen F3, get it out, leave, slide to the left slide to the left all right get it out of there play the game now this move believe it or not might look simple to you but actually black has a very interesting tactic if this move is played and that is knight takes on h2 this is one to remember knight takes on h2 is like whoa what happened here the point is it's for king the rook and queen and if king takes well you got to play king takes now black does not play knight g4 and try to bring the queen in like so because we got easy defense always going to be a good defense if you can get on this diagonal even like a uh, bishop f4 bit of action all right but in this position you can't but queen g3 seal the deal get the job done you're done so this is not the tactical point of knight h2 the tactical point of knight h2 is the move bishop to g4 skewy manui all right that's a problem indeed now, after this move, your queen has only one square to move to. And now bishop takes on e2, hitting the rook. Now the rook has to find a useful square, the most useful actually being h1, to try to be able to bring the king back and try to use this file. I didn't say it was good. I didn't say it was great. I'm just saying you got to play defense. You got to play defense. You got to bite the bullet and do what you have to do. Anything else could potentially expose this queen. So, example, queen g3, knight h5, and you just lost a tempo for exactly zero reason. And f5 might come screaming at you after black breaks this pin in this position. Also, by the way, even here, knight takes is still playable because if king takes, queen check, 
and check out the tactics, yo, you're getting hurt. You can play G3 and try to sneak out, but takes on your queen and takes and he's gone. All right. So white had to play queen of three in this position. What did white decide to do? The subtle and genius queen to h4. Okay, that looks somehow like it's obviously bad. But white had a point. The point is after g5, you can now get your queen back to g3. He was hoping that this would somehow be a weakness, all right, in the position. And maybe he might be able to swing the knight over and bring the knight to this square. So, for example, if you play knight h5, uh, queen here, the dream is to do this and this. The dream, even this is terrible, but it don't matter. Because in fact, that was what he dreamt of. G5 happened, queen G3, knight H5. This is the game. You know, maybe I'll get my knight over here. Your queen can't come in. That's kind of cool. But it's lovely what happened next. Black's next move was beautiful. This is not like a long combination. I love it when it's short and it's unusual. Because Black's next move is the winning move. Great next winning move. And that was to retreat this knight off the square. Like, that's cool. Usually we go forward to win chess games, but to go backwards to win is something that players will often miss. And I want you to sear that into your memory. We've talked about retreating moves a lot on the stream. Retreating moves win games because people don't expect them. They think you're gonna go forward and they calculate the forward moves. We got eyes in the front of our heads, not behind us, right? We, this is how we process the world. No matter what we do with our head, we can't see. You sneak up from behind, it's like, who's behind me, all right? We're weak, and so therefore retreating moves are not natural to like creatures that can spin their eyes and look sideways and behind and all kind of, you know, all right, you know what I'm talking about, unless you're from the exorcist or something. We can't spin our heads around. We miss retreating moves, and this is a often... A known condition disease that strikes even the strongest players but this move is special it's spectacular and it threatens a very simple threat the threat is to push and trap your queen or to play bishop to g4 and trap your queen either one your queen's trapped h3 doesn't help because the pawn pushes and where's your queen going that's game bye bye see you tomorrow and what else can you do you move your knight the, so you can queen can run the bishop shows up johnny ball game I like the move knight f6 where I showed it to you, a retreating move, replacing one knight with the other by backing up. Small little petit combinaison, c'est tout, hein? C'est intéressant quand même. Okay, we're going to continue with the next position. This next one is deeper. That's what I do. I start off slow and then I go whoop, whoop, whoop until I go whoo, stratosphere. So we're starting off slow and now stratosphere. We get a little bit better. Let's get to go, let's get and go uh, forward. Let's get going with the next position. This one, it is black to move. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna flip the board to make it easier. It's black to move. Black, in fact, has just captured on G4 and H takes G4 is the last move. And it's black to move. Black is winning. Black is winning this position. I'd like for you to take a moment to consider the position. What is black's winning sequence? What is Black's winning sequence? All right. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, pause the video, take a look, analyze, work it out. Those of you sitting here right now, you know what you want to do. And so in this position, it is Black to move and win. Now, if I said Black to move, there is no win. All right. Thank you, Akila. If I said black to move and there is no win, you wouldn't be so confident about giving away free food, right? If I said there's no win, guys, there's no win. You'd be like, uh, uh. But because I said there's a win, right? That was the key. I said there was a win. Thank you, Dr. Snoopy. I said there's a win. You go, oh, well, I think I know what the win is. <laughs> so be mindful that just because the, the prompt is the thing, but the moves, you still got to find them. So if somebody prompts you and says, and you know, that's why it's so hard to find, sometimes you might miss wins in actual positions because nobody's prompting you and saying X to move and win when you're playing your game. Do you do that prompt internally? Meaning, real gangsters, like gangsters of the chessboard, they always think it's winning on the next move. 
right? It's like, it's my turn to move and win. If that were the case, what move would I play? Okay, it's not, it, the move I would play doesn't work. Okay, so I'm not winning right now. Then on the next move, okay, what blunder did just happen? Okay, what's the drawback to my opponent's last move? How can I exploit that last move? You always have to put it in your mind that your opponent just made a mistake of some kind. Because there's always a drawback, as we've discussed on the stream. There's always a drawback to the move, but maybe it's of a high level that makes you think, I think I'm winning. All right? Am I winning? Mm, mm, okay, I'm not winning. All right, the drawback is not that big. So, White's position, it is that big. It is that big. But it's not going to be good enough to find the first couple of moves. Now, everybody's jumping. This is what I want to do. I want to sack. Wildfowl even showed a line that's just easy peasy crushing. That would be great. Hmm. Hmm. That would be nice, except let's get to the real deal, how the game went. Rook takes on G4, of course, is the move. If somebody says to you, black to move and win, that's what you're going to calculate. Next, Rook takes on G4. All right? So now you've got a nice little situation where that white king is in deep trouble and you're laughing. Obviously, the king cannot go back to F1 because delish, delish. And now when you move your king to the only square, uh, here comes Matutsky. Game is over. Queen's got to go. And okay, that was embarrassing. But white didn't play that move in the game. White played king to F3, the only other logical alternative. This is the position that you should have foreseen in your head. And this position where you are down a rook for, what is it, two pawns? You're down a rook for a couple of pawns. You had to foresee that you were winning this position no matter what happens next. You miss king f3, whoever missed king f3, you sacked a rook and you missed king f3 because there was a pawn on f3, okay? There was a pawn sitting on f3. So that's the ghost image. There's a pawn sitting here now, so you might calculate rook takes g4, pawn takes rook takes, and you might, in your mind, think there's still a pawn on f3, so you don't do the calculation and recognize the king can now move to that square. That's a flaw in calculation that a lot of people have. We all have it, but we work, we train ourselves out of it by practicing a lot of combinations and making sure that we're very studious about the solutions. So that's why you might miss that there was a king on f3. All right? So... Rook takes on g4, that the king had the opportunity to go to f3. So rook takes g4, king f3, and your analysis begins anew. Now, it should be pointed out uh, that in this position here, the possibility exists of playing the move f3 right now. It's no good. King takes, and again, you're, you're going nowhere. You might feel like you have an attack happening with this move, but now king drops back to e2, and that king has been dancing and prancing, and now you have a problem because queen takes doesn't work. First of all, your b-hop is straight hanging. I'm not even going to talk about knight f3. I'm just going to say your bishop is just hanging, so that is terrible. And now you might think, oh my god, what did I do? What did I do? I'm desperate now. I, I, I got to get an attack going in queen f1, and uh, what did I do? What did I do? <laughs> my attack is dead. Yes, indeed. You're dead. Goodbye. All right? So, rook takes, pawn takes. Now, you might have said, I saw this. It's winning. It's a winning. But then the king of three happens on the board. And it's like, okay, um, what? In this position, black continued to the attack with rook to g3 check. Feeling good in the hood. It would be a great move, a fantastic move, if white hadn't played. Boom! Wake up and smell the Colombian coffee, okay? Yeah, because you're going to need it. <laughs> bing, bing, bing. Uh-oh. Rut row. Uh, now your queen's hanging. You're down two rooks in the position. Bye-bye. You are finished. <laughs> Bye. And uh, white continued to make a couple of moves until black said, give me this pawn too. You, what do you think? You're going to actually queen it someday? And white was like, what happened to my game? What happened to my game? You got to be careful. All right, we claim that this is winning. I said it was winning. Now, some of you might say, "Okay, well, 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 well okay, if it's if it's if it's if it's um, if it's if it's if it's winning, then maybe we need to make a move, like a queen move, because our queen's under attack. What are we supposed to do? This is winning, right? How much money would you bet that this was winning before you play rook takes g4 when you saw a king to f3? Would you bet money that this was winning? I wonder, would I be able to play any move now and you think you can break through easily? No problem. It's, you know, uh, mm, not so easy. Well, 
Turns out the position is indeed winning. It's a rolling winning attack. Really nice attack, by the way. The best move, because rook g3 is coming with queen g4 coming mate, is the move knight to f1. Guarding the square, guarding a key square, hitting the bishop. I said, what you got? What, what is your plan now? What do you have in this position? It turns out that this king is so exposed and these pieces are blocking its retreat. Get the heck out of here. That now black has to start making sure that white never runs. And it works. And the key move here is rook to g2. Beautiful move. H5 also apparently wins, says the engine. But humans understand this move. Rook to g2. Two. Now, if you knew from Rook G4 that Rook G2 was the winning move, I'm giving you big credit, big props. I'm also checking your pockets for cell phones or any kind of digital devices. There's going to be a boss chair analysis a little uh, later as well. The boss chair being the scanning chair that they use in prison to check what prisoners got in uh, <clears throat> various places. Okay, so we will be checking scanning for devices. If you saw this much, but here goes the true secret, okay? Here's the deal. First of all, the move knight takes e3, which we did posit earlier, is playable. And now black must, must play rook to g3 check. Ain't no other move to continue the attack. Obviously, queen here doesn't work. There's a queen guarding, and queen here doesn't work. So the only way to continue this, don't start taking, and get, and then suddenly things are falling apart around you, all right? Like a, like a little queen here maneuver. Ooh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a second. This is a rook. This actually, you could fight. You could fight and hope for a draw with a check and potential perpet chances in this position, but it ain't made. But the key move here, the killer, is rook back to g3 with check. Pawn willing to take with check, or if the king runs, give us this with check and we want your queen, okay? For, we're going to start with a check, make you go in the hole. Then we're going to take this joker. And then when you take, we're going to swing and a beam and a boom and a pass pawn. And these rooks are worried about all these pawns. They don't stand a chance against this queen and the exposed king. It's going to be painful, all right? Plus this pawn is passed. Black is doing work. I hope you calculated all that. Those of you who saw rook g4 right away. Yeah, I'm trolling you right now. So let's get back to this position. Here is the key question, though. The question is, what would you do, since knight takes obviously allows the little rook thing and the bing and the boom and the bam, what would you do about queen to h4? Queen h4. Like, nice. Defense wins championships. Guarding all the key squares. And if you play rook f2, that's got to die. Thank you very much. Hey, let's have a party. All right. Thank you so much, Eunice. All right. Thank you so much. So queen h4, which looks like it covers all the bases. There's also a suggestion of rook to h4. But let's use, let's start with rook to h4. Rook to h4 is nice. I like this move. Rook to h4. The problem with rook h4, sweet move, by the way, is rook to g1. Ooh. Ooh, did you analyze that when you sacked on g4? Rook G1, what are we talking about? We're talking about the Matutsky on the G2 square. We're talking about the pin on the knight. We're talking about things like Rook D2 are not playable because pick it off. Hello. Give us your knight. Just give me the knight. All right? So you can't do that. You can't back up because we told you it was mate. You can't move your queen. It's busy guarding your rook. Don't forget. But there's even the more spectacular boom. Woo! Chess is nice. Knight takes, rook takes is Matutsky. If you don't know, check out that mate. That's an unusual one. There's no name for this one. This mate is called whoop ass. That's what that's called, okay? That's indeed a killer, sweet looking mate. So rook h4 doesn't work because of the quiet rook g1. I know all of you guys saw it. All of you were like, yeah, yeah, I saw that. I sack my rook pawn takes. I take, I play check, and then I play queen. I play the queen move, and then I bring the rook to g2, and then when rook h4, I play that nice rook g1. But the move we really want to see is queen to h4, and this is so sweet, so sweet. The winning move is... Queen to g4 check. 
If somebody did this to me in a game, a mate like that, sack the queen like this, the knife would come out. I'm sorry. It would just have to happen. Like, like what? Like the switcher Rooney on the Rooney Rooney? Like, that ain't right. That's not right. Not the sideways one. You know, I saw the other one with the rook mate that had the same. But this under the sideways one, you feel like, what? The queen came out. This other one, the queen was back, right? This one here. It's the same. It's, it's, you're giving away the queen to a knight and you're checkmating. But it feels somehow like the queen is back. It's a great sack. Don't get me wrong. The queen is back and the cubby hole couldn't help out. But this one, the thing that upsets me about this one, let me get to the position. The thing that upsets me about this one is the queen comes and covers all the entry squares. Everything is covered. Like, you got, you get nothing. You're nothing. You get nothing. No, I ain't nada. Huh? And all of a sudden, the queen's like, um, you're right. <laughs> in your face. You covered the square. The worst move in chess is the square you just guarded. The threat. You just stopped, and they played it on you anyway. That's the worst feeling ever. Oh, I stopped your move. What? And then they play queen g4, and you're like... <laughs> you're a bad person. <laughs> this is a bad person. Drop queen g4 on you, okay? Check. How many times do you ever see this checkmate? Tell me. How many of you have dropped a checkmate like this one in your games? Tell me. That's nasty. That's na that's rude. That's rude. Okay? That's just rude. Didn't your mama tell you not to abuse people like this? Like, what? Like, like a broken and a bishop in a pawn. Like, <laughs> I sacked my queen on you. And look at your nasty position. Okay? That's that. Yes, indeed. Poor black in the game. Didn't move the queen away. Played rook g3. Too soon. <laughs> And got hit with queen takes g3 and had to resign a couple of moves later. Learn from other people's mistakes. A little bit of patience, a little bit of patience in the attack and calculate better. Okay? Indeed. Indeed. Nasty. Nasty. That's just tragic. Tragic comedy, we call it. Let's go to another one. More tragic comedy in the building. Now we're going to get deeper. Let's get deeper. Okay, we're going to get down into this position. Get down, get down. All right, here we go. In this position, uh, White decided to lay a little tiny little so-called trap. I guess you call it a trap. I don't see this. The knight was hanging. Did not want to move the knight off the square because saw rook takes g5 coming. He said, I don't want to move my knight, even though knight d4 is hitting the pawn on e6. And forces this rook to this square. Rook takes is simply knight takes e6. Like, what's wrong with that? How can that be bad? I'm just letting you see what white should have seen. White instead play king f2. Like, what are you doing? Hitting the knight. Chasing the knight away. Until black said, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm taking the pawn. I'm not going anywhere at all. Thank you very much for that blunder. I really appreciate it. Let's keep uh, doing some more like that, okay? So now White got pissed off. And <laughs> I was like, what just happened? Let me pretend that I was actually attacking. And White played the move, bishop to h3. Bishop h3, all right? Your rook moved. Let me hit your pawn. Let me hit your pawn. Nice little check. Let me prepare rook to g1. Hit your knight. Who's going to defend it? Hey, I got tricks. I have tricks. What's up? What's up? What you got? Black played a very logical move here. Black played the move knight to c5. Let white off the hook. This is a strong looking move, by the way. Knight to c5. White played bishop to b4. Hey, I'm hitting your knight. I'm pinning it. I'm hitting your pawn. I'm doing work. To which Black now continued in style with Knight CE4 check. You're like, whoa, <laughs> what is he doing? Black is showing off now. Takes on 
E4 was played. And now all black had to do was take this pawn. Just take the pawn. Just check. That's all black had to do. Just check. When the king runs, it's true you don't have check. You, you got nothing. But you can play this check, and white dare not leave this knight alone. White has to go back. And now, actually, the game ends in a draw. That's what black should have done. Instead, black got spectacular. <laughs> black sacked a rook. Like, wow. Like a boss. Like an absolute genius. King takes. Took on e4 with check. I, I can't even say what he thought was happening here. White just laughed and played king f4 and went on to do the do. Crazy. Blunders. Whatever. I'm not interested in the blunders because that was completely ridiculous. What I'm interested in, though, is this position. This position, there is a win for black that we want to learn from. Black missed while black was busy imploding. But what we want to learn from, and this is just special but let's go back one move before i get to that win in this position what we always ask when a player makes a move is what is the flaw behind their last move what is the drawback we don't care about their intentions now i know that's opposite to what you've learned i've said this on the stream i can say it a million times we're not as concerned at first about why they made their last move everybody will tell you otherwise you're gonna you're gonna be on most streams or most books, or most videos. Or What's the reason behind the last move? That's normal. That's natural. That's what you should do. The person makes a move. You ask why they did that. You can ask that later. The first question I want you to ask, which you want to learn is, what's the drawback to the last move? What's wrong with the last move? What is no longer protected? How is the last move exposing my opponent? This is the next level not next level this is the super duper level this is the level of the strongest players they do this automatically where they instantly see what was wrong with your move there's something about your move smells what's wrong with what they just did and they spot the flaw and see if they can exploit the flaw the reason for your move is simply irrelevant by the way the reason for your move is also a drawback the fact that you made a move that tells me information is a drawback if you could make moves and i could never figure out the reasons for your moves you just beat me if they were good moves. You just beat me. What, why, why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? Oh, damn, it's checkmate in five. I, I couldn't figure that out. But if I can see, oh, it's checkmate in five. Yeah, I see what your threat is. You think you're slick. You think you're nice. Well, I'm going to deal with that. So even the fact that your moves make sense is a drawback, is a flaw in the system. If only you could attack without making sense. Oh, wouldn't that be cool? He crazy, mate. Damn, crazy like a fox. So let's get to this. The last move was bishop to h3. Now, a lot of us, and black indeed in this game, would say the reason for bishop h3 is to attack the pawn on e6. Perfectly logical. Perfect, like that, That's the reason, right? So let's do something about it. What did black do? Knight to c5. Perfectly logical. Yeah. Low level, too. I'm telling you, there's this level, and then there's the, the, the other level. This level is, what's the drawback to your move? This level is, what's the reason for his move, or her move? Why, why, did, why did they do that move? We don't care about why you did the move yet. What we care about is the drawback. The drawback to this move, there are a couple. One is always existence. We talked about this. The bishop on this square has exposed itself. Why? Because any square you're on is the weakest square relative to you. Any square a chess piece is on is its weakest square. The bishop cannot guard h3. Back here in the previous move, before bishop h3, h3 is guarded. Anybody show up on h3, the bishop, I got it. I got that covered, says the bishop. But once the bishop goes to h3, I don't have it covered anymore. I'm on the square. I'm exposed. All right? I now cover g2, but h3 I don't have covered. And worse, I'm sitting on it, so I'm exposed on the square. Problem number one, drawback number one. You feel me? Are you with me? Okay. The second drawback to this move that's important is the number of squares it controls. What squares is it no longer uh, control? What squares is it neglecting? This bishop used to guard h1. Can that really be important? Like, really? Seriously? All right, Maurice, seriously? Well, it no longer guards h1, which is a point, and it no longer guards f3. Well, that could be a point. That actually could be a point. Let's peep that. 
The bishop no longer guards f3. Is there a way we can exploit the fact that the bishop no longer guards f3? That would be your question. So if you ask these, if you make these observations, I've made the observations, and now you say, okay, how can I exploit what just happened? Remember, I'm winning. Am I winning? The last move, am I winning? Let me look. The drawback to the move, am I winning? When you look first, when you ask the question and you look, you might find. But if you only process another question, what's the reason for the last move? Oh, snap, the bishop e6 check threat. Oh, I need to guard that. You find other moves. Superior questions produce superior solutions. Ooh, ooh, that's why they pay me the big bucks, the corporations, for me to put on a suit and get clean and be like, um, yes, let's talk how chess applies to business and life. That's what's up. Superior questions produce superior solutions. And here goes that question. What was the drawback to the last move? F3 is hanging. So how can we put more pressure on F3? We could sack. We don't see a continuation. However, what if we add pressure to F3 with the move bishop to E4? Yum, yum, yum. Let's talk chess. Let's talk chess on the wild side. Double exclamation mark, amazing move, bishop to e4. Let's apply that pressure, all right? We're threatening on e4 now. Now, will white stop to pay attention to what we're doing? We hope so. <laughs> we would hope so. White might say, what's the threat? Oh my God, the threat is here. Let me make a defensive move like bishop to g2 because the threat is on. Or if I take this, hello, I take this. Well, there is a little knight takes a little, whoops, I'm hitting this. And uh, where's the king going to go? Uh, can't go to this file at all. Whoops. Can't go back because this knight is hanging. And can't go to e2 because, bing, hello, we're forking you and your feelings are being hurt royally. Okay? And by the way, this is still hanging. So don't touch our bishop. Don't touch the bishop. Knight takes. Is going. How did this bishop turn into a factor? It's like miles away. How did it turn into a factor? Yes, pieces have eyes. The knight has eyes. Bishop here. If you want to drop back, what was your last two moves about? Bishop h3, bishop g2. I just put my bishop in e4. You're in trouble. There's a couple of ideas. One idea is maybe I might take this and double up on your boy. And now your poor king is like, oh, I'm running for my life. What is happening here? Where are you going to put your king? Because there's check threats. There's picking this off, coming at you. Do you want to go up board so I can figure out how to mate you? You're in deep trouble here, son. And e5 is coming. Pure board domination of the highest level. But the major question, folks, after bishop to e4 is, what if white says, how dare you ignore me? <laughs> how dare you ignore me with your bishop move? What if I continue with bishop takes e6, check, and I'm hitting your knight, and if your rook shows up, I clock it, and then take this rook for free, and if your king goes to the file, it's exposed. How dare you completely ignore my threat? Well, that's what gangsters do, all right? That's what Aikido masters do. You want to punch? Please punch. I need you to punch. Punch away. I'm not going to stop you. Just punch so I can use your energy against you. And this is what this is about. Yes, you are allowed to take my pawn with check. You're allowed to attack my knight. You're allowed to flush my king up the board. You can do all that, and you're still going to lose. Ho, ho. Seriously? Seriously? Like, what kind of chess did we just enter? What twilight zone, what matrix did we just enter that you ignore the threat by putting your bishop on a square where it's hanging to a pawn and allow bishop takes e6 check and flush the king out? And let us continue. King h7, king h7, it turns out the knight is hanging with power, so we don't want that. You know, that's like, that's a real deal. That's the real deal right there. And by the way, if you now play takes, this knight can still take with check, and your king still has nowhere to go. That's not going to hang something with tempo. This is still this. This, uh, this is still this. You're, right? You're getting run through with a buzzsaw. So, check. King here. Got you. Rook takes is going to be beastie. Your king's going nowhere. Don't take the knight. Don't you dare. Don't you dare take my knight as Matutsky is coming your way. All right. Now your king is completely cut off with a swarm of killer pieces about to mate you on a stick. Come get some. Come take this beat down. 
You don't think it's mate? Check. I wonder if it's mate. Uh, Matutski. Bye. See you later. Four pieces doing work. So you can't touch tonight. So now you start to think, well, wait a minute. What if I play? Check. I'm a genius. This is going to hang later. That's going to hang later. Maybe this will hang later. What are you going to do? Well, the night guards H1, we said. Why don't we take it? Mistake. Why? Kick. Rook takes check. King takes. Now pawn takes. There's no knight to take back on e4. The drawback to getting greedy and taking on h1 is that you can't play knight takes e4 check. Your best move. Your best move. Okay? You got greedy and took the rook. Now there's no knight to take back. What can you take back with? The pawn, indeed. But now after takes, now rook takes. Uh, slide to the left. Check. Slide down. Now there are two b-hops on the board. Yeah, you get a pawn, whatever. But two bishops, all right? You got a rook and two pawns, but these two bishops will do work. They will do work, chilling like villains. With this rook, you're fighting as black, hoping you stay in this game, but white has got a position to play with. You don't believe me? Chill. It's what's going to happen. Bishop back is strong because, for example, if you play this move, whoop, another retreat, and guess what? Your rook can't get away. It's got to play rook to h2, only move. And now the bishops do work. Take, take, and so <laughs> Flava beans. Give us some material and don't let us start pushing past pawns because these bishops are going to do work. Okay, black didn't need to fight this position. Why? Why not? Let's go back to the original. Right here, right here. How spectacular is this? How absolutely spectacular. Here's the deal. Black ignored the threat of bishop takes e6 check. Allowed bishop takes e6 check. Black now sees rook h1 check on the board. And the completely winning move for black is to say, your rook is not as good as my knight. Your rook does not match up with my knight. So here's the deal. King g6. Boss move right there. Serious gangster move. The, I, I don't need your, I don't need it. I don't need your rook. My knight needs to be on g3. My knight needs to take this. So, yes, you took my pawn with check. You flushed my king out. You rook checked me. You flushed my king out some more. I'm not touching your rook because my knight trumps your rook any day of the week. My knight is a boss. Like, for real? <laughs> for real? Like that? You allow check and another check? You don't even take the rook? You move your king up and say, I'm in your face. What you going to do? Hit me if you can. Now let's get back to the business of your night. That's what this show has been about this whole time. <laughs> your night, okay? Again, don't touch, okay? Because, well, actually in this position, there are many different ways to hit. But let's hit with the immediate shit. Because, by the way, since you no longer threaten, there's also bishop takes, right? Straight and clear. We're threatening that one and that one and that one and disco. And you got no threats at all to speak about. You're just crying that this position happened, right? So that, that alone, argument finished. But if you want to really hit, bang, hit him hard. <laughs> what happened? What happened? I'm getting served. What happened? Check. Pain, death, destruction. Don't touch my knight. What kind of setup moves is king, bishop e4, king h7, king g6, now you resign. That means your only move right now, your only move, is to finally take this bishop. But well, we already know the damage that's going to get done to you. Knight takes. King moves back. King's chilling. All right, move back. And then, you want my knight? I dare you to take my knight. <laughs> now that I took yours, at the moment, black is up a pawn. Like black only wants a pawn. Black is threatening e3. Black is threatening c3. Black is doing work. Work. Only way to defend both is to play bishop d4. The only way that makes sense. And now white continues with c5. What's the drawback to your last move? Your bishop is on the d4 square. We got to get rid of it. We're going to take this. We don't care what you do. You could take our knight. We'll take your bishop. Guess who's coming to e3? Guess who has the dominant pieces plus the knight that's going to serve you breakfast with some poison in it? This game is over. This is all pure d Classic, vicious beatdown. How is this possible, folks? 
If you had to play chess like this in this position, the move Bishop H3 is on the board. Sorry, here. Bishop H3 is on the board. How many people, show of hands, put your hand down. Show of hand, you know your hand shouldn't be up, would say, I don't care about takes, check to this, hitting my knight, rook checks coming. I don't care about any of that. I'm going to play bishop e4, hanging my bishop temporarily so that after check and king here on the next move, after check, not only did I not care about that, I don't even care about your rook either. I'm playing king g6. Hmm. Uh, uh, takes, takes, king here, takes. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to serve you lunch on a platter. And by the way, don't try a move like this when I'm guarding everybody because bing, bing, bing. What is the drawback to your last move? Your rook showed up on the square. Hello. Existence is a problem. I know. Existence is a problem. I know, right? The fact that we exist means we're going to die one day. Mm. I'm getting existential on the stream. I don't want to blow your minds, folks. But if you didn't exist, you know what I'm saying? If you didn't exist in the first place, then you wouldn't die. That's all I'm saying. So the rook exists. It's on the square. Why couldn't you at least guard D4 without going to D3? That's not how it works. That's not how it works. Your move is there. Now you just weaken the square. We're going to attack you and cause some pain. And that is what you call one of the greatest moves you've ever seen in your life. Okay. Would you solve this move, Bishop E4? Which heuristic do you use? Which methodology do you use to solve chess positions? Would you have seen Bishop E4 if you, somebody had played Bishop H3 against you? Or would you have said, excuse me, I see the threat. I need to deal with the threat. If you want to see more of these videos, don't forget to click the subscribe button. And please follow me on twitch.tv slash GM Ashley. Thank you.